Hello and welcome to another Photoshop editing video. This time let's work on restoring this drone image. This means we're going to try making the shot a little less overexposed and blown out, especially in the sky, and just restore a more natural looking daytime shot with a little bit of glow. All of that will be done in the Camera Raw editor, while I'm also going to use a bit of Photoshop to finish this whole image. As always, to follow along you can find a link to download the raw file in the description of the video. And now let's begin. First, the raw adjustments. As always, I'm starting by changing the profile. In this case, I'm going from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard. This will brighten up the image a little bit in the shadows. So that's pretty nice already. Looking at histogram, we have all the details we need in the shadows and the highlights. You can see there's no over or under exposure. So let's open up the basic panel and start working on that. First off, I simply like to bring down the exposure just a tiny bit. And I'm also going to bring down the highlights and hopefully we get some details in the sky. So by bringing down the highlights, you can already see there's some blue coming through. That is great. That's exactly what we want. Then we could introduce some more contrast to this image by bringing down the shadows. Let's drop them a little further. Just like that. Great. Histogram is still looking good. However, you can see there is a little room on the right side, which means we can just further brighten up the image. So I'm going to push the whites a bit. And I'm also going to slightly raise the blacks. Okay. Exposure wise, it does look a little better than before, in my opinion, especially due to the blue color in the sky we have restored. The contrast might be a bit lacking at the moment, but don't worry about that. We will fix that as we continue editing this image. For now, let's add a little bit of contrast since this works quite good on this mountain landscape. And I'm also going to drop the clarity very, very slightly just to give the image an overall softer look. Then I'm going to add some vibrance and let's also push the saturation a notch just to give this image some more colors. Perfect. Now that we have done the base adjustments, let's head into the masking stuff. First, I do want to work on the sky. And since we have a pretty clear edge here between the mountains and the sky, I should be able to use the sky mask, which Photoshop automatically creates. It looks decent, but I still want to tweak it a bit. So let's go and say subtract, radial gradient, then I'm just going to take away a bit from the horizon level right there. And the reason for me to do that is because I want to create a gradient from dark to bright from top to bottom of the sky. So with that mask, let's drop the exposure. Let's drop it quite a bit actually. All right. Next up, I'm going to add a linear gradient pretty much for the whole image. Let's go with something like this and I'm going to raise the whites in here to add some more brightness and I'm also going to raise the clarity. This will give us some more rougher details overall. And now let's place a linear gradient over the foreground, maybe like this. In here I'm going to bring up the exposure. And I do think I want to boost the shadows just a notch. All right, starts to look a lot better already. I'm not that happy with the center at the moment. So for that, I'm going to create another radial gradient. And I'm just making sure to cover most of the center like this. Here, let's further bring up the exposure. I'm also going to bring up the whites and I'm going to raise them quite a lot to get a lot of details back from here. And then let's raise the contrast a little bit. Perfect. At this point, the left side of the image is a tad too bright for my taste. So I am using another linear gradient to fix that. Let's create one like this. And with this one, I'm again just bringing down the exposure. And I'm just trying to lead the eye more towards the center of the image with that darkening effect on the left. Finally, let's add a little subtle glow on the sky. 
they are using another radial gradient. Just a small thin one like this. And in here I'm bringing up the blacks. And I'm also bringing up the whites. And that looks great. So that's the image after the masking adjustments. You can see we now have a lot more contrast going on. The sky looks much, much better with those very, very visible blue tones. So it almost looks like a pretty daytime shot. However, let's enchant the shot some more doing a bit of color grading. I'm starting in the color mixer. And first off, let's work on the saturation. I do want to raise orange and yellow. And this will mostly affect the grass on the mountains, of course. And then let's maybe bring down the blue saturation a bit. Okay, that looks great. For the luminance, I am bringing up the orange luminance as well as the yellow luminance. And then I'm going to drop the blue luminance, which will make the sky darker. And again, just add back a little saturation to the blue tones. So that's looking very, very good. Now for the split toning, I am just going to target the shadows with a cold color tone. That looks like a good hue. Let's bring up the saturation just a little bit. And finally, I'm heading into the calibration tab. Here, I'm going to drop the blue primary hue and then push the saturation again. All right, let's again compare to before. At this point, the colors do look much, much better. Now, the only thing that's left to do in the raw editor is to go into the details tab and just sharpen the image. As always, I'm going with the same settings. Just add some more sharpening and that's it. So at this point, we're done with the raw adjustments. Let's open up the image in Photoshop and finish it. First off, I'd like to add a little bit of Orton Glow. For that, I'm going to use the TK Panel plugin. If you don't have that plugin, you can try hit Ctrl Alt 2, which will just select all the highlights of the image. With that selection, hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V to pass that as a new layer. And with that layer selected, we are going to filter blur. Here we're choosing Gaussian blur. You can see how this adds this very cool Orton glow effect. So for me, the selection here is not precise enough. I'm going to delete that. As I said, I'm going with the TK panel plugin. And let's see. I do want to select very bright highlights. So in this case, I can go with lights too. Hit select. Again, just hit Ctrl C and Ctrl V. And again, use the Gaussian blur effect to add the Orton glow. Next up, I do want to change the blending mode of that layer to lighten and bring down the opacity to not make this glow effect too obvious. At the same time, let's apply a layer mask. And with the black brush, let's switch the foreground color and bring it back up the brush opacity. I'm just going to mask away a few parts of that Orton glow effect so the mountains remain sharp. I just want to have that Orton glow on the top part of the sky. So that's looking good. We could bring back the opacity a bit or maybe even duplicate that layer by hitting Ctrl J. That's looking like a nice glow effect right there. Then let's apply a little bit of dodging. Again, new layer. This time I'm switching the blending mode to overlay and I'm making use of the TK panel plugin. Again, I want to work on the lights of the image, so I'm going through the lights masks and I think the lights to mask will work great in this case again. So layer mask activated, lights to, and on that overlay layer with a white brush and a lower brush opacity, I'm just going to brighten up a few areas. All right, that looks great. Then let's see how we can enhance the contrast some more. Let's try use a curves adjustment layer. And I want to go with a simple S curve. So I'm creating a point for the shadows and just slightly drag it down and a point for the highlights and slightly raise it. You can see how this immediately adds some very, very cool contrast. 
Let's tweak the contrast in the center some more, however. Again, I am using a curse adjustment layer and let's bring down shadows quite a bit and also raise the highlights a little more than before. Of course, I don't want to have this over the whole image, so I'm going to invert that layer mask of the curves adjustment layer by hitting Ctrl I. Then I'm grabbing the brush tool, set the foreground color to white. And again, I'm making sure to have a lower brush opacity, otherwise this effect might be way too obvious. So, and then I'm just carefully painting in the contrast in the center. Just like that. Perfect. At this point, let's work on the colors. I'm going to use the vibrance adjustment layer and let's go back to the TK panel again. Here, I'm going to the color menu and I'm choosing red because with the red color, I can pretty much target all the grass on the mountain sides. So again, activate layer mask, go to color and choose red. And then on the vibrance adjustment layer, I'm going to bring up the vibrance and the saturation. And you can see how this just very nicely increases the saturation without overdoing it. Finally, I'm thinking about adding some overall saturation. So again, let's use the vibrance adjustment layer one more time and just bring up the vibrance. So we get some nice rich blue color tones. But again, I'm very, very careful to not overdo it. So just playing around here a little bit. But I think that looks great. And at this point, one more thing I might want to do is to crop the image just to have this part right there more centered. So I'm taking away parts of the right side. I don't want to take away too much, but I have to. That's looking pretty decent. So let's go with something like this. And at this point, we are done editing this image. So I hope this was an interesting tutorial. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.